Hello everybody, it's another beautiful day here in South Florida in mango land because it's mango season and mangoes are everywhere right now. And here I am each morning, I come out of my house and I pick up all the mangoes that fell off the tree the night before and I see what mangoes are ripe on the tree and so on. And it's a lot of work. People don't realize how much, it work, how much work it is to keep trees fruiting and just to keep trees pruned and maintained and so on. It's a good amount of work. Well, in today's video, I am gonna show you a clip that I took of a local clip at Tropical Acres with Alex. And unlike just talking about mangoes, I want people to understand and appreciate what Alex does at Tropical Acres to get mangoes to you. And not just on a daily local basis when you come by and you locally buy mangoes, but also uh, through the mail. Yes, he's mailing mangoes and it, it makes it even more complicated on how to do that what to pick, what's available. But I'm thankful he does that because any of you out there that do not live here in sunny South Florida and you can't get the mangoes uh, locally, uh, thanks to Alex's efforts, you can get them through the mail and you could actually order something you want, uh, a particular mango you want to get. So check out this video of uh, Alex talking about exactly how he goes out on a farm and what he determines what is ripe and what is ready to mail and at what stage and so on. Check it out. All right, everybody, here we are back at Tropical Acres Farms, and Alex has a tough job during mango season, and he's going to today tell you the life of a mango owner. Okay. Picker. So, Picker owner. Um, one of the things we do at this farm is we ship fruit to people. We do it a couple times a week, and we're known for having quite a bit of variety to offer shipping customers. And there's a method to being able to do that, though, uh, when you're growing 300 different kinds of mangoes. And it's a rather uh, cumbersome and, and time-consuming method, but what we do is we literally come out here into the field, uh, often while we're harvesting, and we'll count the amount of shippable, shipping grade fruit we have on the trees. Now, shipping grade means that it's fruit that hasn't started to ripen because we cannot send ripe fruit. It'll get destroyed in transit a lot of the times or damaged. But we also can't pick something that's too green because if it's picked too green, it just does not ripen properly and achieve the full flavor that the mango can. So we want people to have the full experience of the mango and we want that fruit to ripen and taste like it's supposed to taste and be representative of that variety. So it's kind of a tight window that we have to catch the fruit at. And so what we'll do is we'll go to each tree and see and count how many on each tree we have ready to ship. And then we take a note and I'll put a note in my phone of how many I have on that specific variety. And oftentimes I'll have to visit multiple trees of that variety that I have able to ship. And then later on I'll go through and I'll count um, how many I can put in each box. And that's how we make the boxes that we post on our website. We come out here and we count the fruit that we have that's ready to ship, and we don't really count anything that's not ready. And, um, and I'll go through the canopy and look for anything that I consider shipping grade, circle the tree, look underneath the branches and so forth, and then I make that note of how much uh, I can send. This is a Wester mango, so um, it's still got quite a bit of fruit on it right now. But not all of it is quite ready to pick, um, and so uh, there's a number of these that will not get counted into our shipping total. So anyway, that's so how I do it. What time do you start off doing that each day? Um, so we only ship twice a week, so I always count the fruit the day we post the boxes, which is the day before. So we're going to ship tomorrow. Tomorrow's Monday, today is Sunday. So we post the boxes Sunday at 7 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time. And we'll do it again on Tuesday at 7 o'clock Eastern Time, as long as um, we're able to ship that next day um, and it doesn't interfere with our, our schedule. So, for example, if we get a holiday, a federal holiday on Monday, we'll have to ship on Tuesday. That means we'll usually make our next post on Wednesday. So, 4th of July coming up, uh, that week we will probably post the boxes, the Tuesday boxes on Wednesday instead of Tuesday evening. But otherwise, the normal schedule is Sundays at 7 and Tuesdays at 7 is when we make our post. And then the next day, we ship that fruit um, as long as we're able to. Sometimes we have to wait two days to ship depending on, um, you know, weather and whether we have enough boxes and stuff. So, uh, but that's how we like to do it. 
So what we'll do is after our fruit stand closes on Sundays, uh, I will go out in the field like right now and do my fruit count. Um, but it actually starts in the morning because I have some trees in my backyard at home. I've got about maybe 40 to 50 trees in my backyard that are bearing and I'll make my first counts there. And then I make the rest of the counts in the afternoons on Sunday. And the same is done on Tuesday as well. Um, after the fruit stand closes, I go and I make the counts. Um, and then we design the boxes and post them at seven the next day. I start harvesting the fruit in the morning, um, first uh, in Palm Springs and then here in West Palm Beach. I'll do it through the course the entire day with the exception of when our fruit stand is open from three to six in the afternoon. At that point in time, I have to uh, sometimes be at the fruit stand or be out retrieving fruit or whatever. But um, outside of that time period, I'm usually harvesting up till a certain hour and then we're packing the fruit and shipping it to people and trying to get it shipped off before 8 o'clock p.m., which is our cutoff time. For so you were mentioning, so wait, let me ask you this question first. So you were shipping on Wednesday. Everything you're shipping was picked a couple of days before no, that day? it's picked the same day. The same so day. So everything that we ship to you is almost always picked the same day with rare exceptions. Sometimes a certain mango we, uh, we had picked the day before and it was still shippable. But usually we try to get it shipped the same day we pick it because once it's picked, it's starting to ripen and we don't want it to be soft already or going soft before we, we mail it to somebody because if it gets damaged in transit, believe me, we will hear about it in a lot of cases and people don't like receiving bruised fruit. So um, that's why we try to pick up the same day we ship them. Now you said something to me very important about this farm. You said a lot of other farms are out there, but... Nobody does it the way you do. It's so labor yeah. intensive. Um, and it's labor and time intensive. I don't get much time to do or think about anything else other than harvest mangoes and ship mangoes and sell them. So um, it's a lot of work and effort, but um, I think it's worth it because the, the customer receives something that's very different and has an opportunity to try varieties that they never otherwise would be able to try. Um, and I think a lot of people really appreciate that. So, uh, but that's why we do it this way. Most farms will grow only a few varieties and they'll often only ship only a few varieties. And it does make things easier and it does streamline things, um, but the, it's a different product. So I like being able to offer people, um, you know, almost every kind of mango they can imagine or dream of. Um, and uh, so that's why we do it. And what are the top three mangoes people order through the mail? Well, I mean, like our boxes, uh, we'll, we'll put like in our premium boxes, like five or six or seven different varieties. There's certainly mangoes that are highly requested, um, but we don't really do customized orders anymore. We used to. Um, a lot of the newer Zill varieties get requested a lot. Um, certain Indian mangoes get requested a lot, like Kesar and Alfonso. Um, Kerry mango gets requested a ton. So... Certainly those are some of the varieties that receive uh, a lot of attention from consumers and we hear about it you know, through phone calls and emails and stuff. But the way we do it now is we'll, um, we'll post some single variety boxes of mangoes that we have in quantity, but most of the other varieties will go into uh, boxes that will have five or six or seven different kinds in them. A lot of times there'll be one or two or three examples of that, usually not more. Um, and the boxes will have like 10 to 15 mangoes in it. It's usually around 9 to 10 pounds of fruit. So that's how... That's and how you're also shipping trees now. Yeah, we ship trees. Although right now at the height of mango season, I have very little time to ship trees. But once the season starts to slow down, we'll have a lot more time to ship them. And of course, after the mango season. So uh, we're excited about that because we just got approved to ship trees to California. We've already sent the first trees to California. So it's like a test shipment. So for the people in California that uh, really want to get mango trees, um, we're going to have that service available pretty soon. Um, once the mango season starts to trail off a bit, we'll be able to start shipping some trees. And we're going to be grafting a lot more trees this year. We're taking custom grafting orders from customers as well, from people who want specific varieties that are hard to find, or maybe they want them on a certain rootstock. So we're doing that right now uh, at our farm. Well, you told me last time, uh this probably you have probably have more varieties here as for one farm than anyone else in the United States. As far as I'm aware of, um, on an individual property, I don't know of any privately held mango collections that are larger than what we have here. Fairchild Botanical Garden at one point had 500 to 600 varieties, but it was spread between several properties, um, and you know isn't really like a 
a functioning for-profit farm. Um, most farms will grow a limited number of varieties. There's a few that have in the dozens or even over a hundred varieties in some cases, but I don't know of anybody that has quite as many as we have here, uh, but that has its pluses and minuses. So sure. there's lots of varieties here that are, um, you know, we're growing, but I kind of sometimes wish we weren't. So sometimes I wish I had less varieties, but I'm proud of the fact that we have so many for sure. So Well, not just here. I mean, probably anywhere in the world, you know, of any place that's if, as an individual property that's... There might be like unique. collections in India that might have more than that. I'm not sure. I can't make the claim that we've got the most in the world. Uh, I have no idea who does, but I'm proud of what we do have. And mm -hmm. I'm glad that we are able to grow this amount of varieties. You know, we're blessed by our location um, as much as anything. Um, and the determination of the, the property owner, I guess, and myself. You know, him and I really collaborated on, you know, obtaining all this stuff and it took such a long time and taking proper care of it, you know, is, is a big part too. So. While we're talking about ordering and websites and stuff, you have to tell people about the descriptions on your website. Did you personally write each one of those yeah, descriptions? Yeah, I wrote all How long the, did that take Yeah, you? it took a while. I wrote all those descriptions and my girlfriend gets credit for formatting and building that website because I don't know anything about building a website. Um, I mean, I had kept notes of all the mangoes that I grew and uh, had experience with over the years. And so one thing I do need to mention about those descriptions, though, they are descriptions. They're not meant to indicate inventory. So a lot of people click on those and they'll see that something is marked as sold out. And that's because we used a shop template to write those descriptions on the website. And so they don't let that, that format for that website doesn't let us, uh, you know, make it so that it's not a shop appearance and so we have to have some kind of inventory out of uh, on each description yeah. so to ignore that it's not necessarily something we do or don't have in stock in terms of trees or graft wood or fruit so you have to ask us directly it just means that we're growing that mango in the ground at a minimum um, and we may have trees or we may have budwood available or fruit but you have to ask us uh, I did but I wrote all those descriptions uh, over a course of probably I don't know, a month or two or three. I don't remember how long it took me to write them all. I, I've, I usually will edit them every year after the season is over if I want to tweak something. That about, was my next about, question. How yeah, much do you update um, them? I update them. I update them every single season. Um, I'll go at the after the season's over, of course, in the fall, usually when I actually have time to do that kind of thing. I'll go and I'll, I'll look at each mango and see what I had to say about it and whether I want to change something about it, whether it's like you know, information about um, it's seed tri type or, or uh, what flavor group I want to put it in or what its productivity traits have been like, uh, things like that. Um, you know, some of these things we're still learning about because they haven't been fruiting for us very long. Other varieties we grow, there's, you know, they've been grown for decades and we know almost everything there is to know about them already, so there's not much more to be said. But there's certainly a lot to be said about many of them that are, you know, undergrown or not, not widely found written about. And so many of these varieties we grow here, there was not much information or zero information about them on the internet. So we had to kind of discover it ourselves. And that's why every year we kind of update what we know about them. So. All right. Well, thank you very much, man. And uh, we're in the middle of the mango season right here. All right, everybody. There it was. That was Alex at Tropical Acres. Make sure you check out some of his mangoes. And if you're locally here in South Florida, go check out his farm. But if you're not local, Go on his website and order a box of mangoes through the mail. And he, he, he has a lot of expertise in this area and picking them and so on. His link is below the video. Thank you, Alex, for everything you do. We really appreciate you and for the trees you get us and all the different things you do for us and, uh, and all these videos and teachings. And everybody, thank you for watching. If you're not subscribed, please subscribe to this channel and give it a, a like and a thumbs up. That'll help me on YouTube here. And until then, everybody, have a great day and keep growing.